All right, so this might be like one of my last ones just kind of going over the OEM ECU because I don't know. I'm just kind of playing around with it myself. I am no master of this, but let me just explain the process in its entirety. Um, before I go into that, just keep in mind this is not GPX supported. This voids your warranty, yada, 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 all that jazz. I want to make sure to say that because, I don't know, I feel like Gary's done right and treated me right and fairly. And I don't want to create a bunch of problems for GPX by giving this out. But I'm never going to start my own ECU flashing business. So, that said, flashing the ECU. First part is your parts. So, I will put a link to some information on these cables. But this is a Vag KKL cable with a USB connection on the end. This one side right here. And this is just from Amazon or whatever. And this is an OBD2 cable with, it had bare ends on it, and I spliced on this connector for this end. So, you put these together, and it makes one diagnostic cable for the system. So then your diagnostic port, remove your side panel. Uh, for a lot of them, it's going to be hanging down in the airbox for mine. I moved it up and put it up here. It's just this little white connector. And you'll actually see there's three three holes, or the, the holes are all just covered up by there because this is just a blank. This is just a blank thing right here. Just pop that off, pop this, pop it in there. Bam, that is it. That is it for the hardware you need is just $25, $30 cable. So now other than that, we're gonna need to use some software and luckily there is some free software available for this. And I will put a link to that is the HUD ECU hacker. Um, I would highly recommend if you like the tool and you're using it a lot to donate to his causes that he, he puts on there. Because um, it is a free tool. All right, so now we'll get into the HUD ECU Hacker program. Uh, before we do that, just want to make sure to be clear, I am not an ECU tuner. I am a computer guy. That's why I got into this thing, because it's a little computer. So I understand computers, I understand how computers work, and I kind of understand how engines work. So don't, don't uh, listen to this and think that I know everything about these ECUs. I know every setting. I don't. It's a lot of guess and check that I've been doing to be like, oh, what does that do? Okay, it does that. You know. Anyway, that said, let's get into the ECU tuning and the actual software. All right, so this is the HUD ECU hacker. Over on the left-hand side is where you do your connection. For mine, since I have a badge adapter, I want to make sure to keep that selected up here. Uh, the port, it always fills in my correct COM port because I don't have that many things on my laptop. And then you can connect. That's only for diagnostics on the left-hand side. It can't be connected for diagnostics if you want to flash things. So then over on the right-hand side is where you actually flash your memory. So the first thing you want to do before you do anything with these is download. So you hook up the cable. You download your flash memory, you name it something that you want for your bike. It can be any name you want, but this will download it to a file, so that way you have a set file on your computer uh, with the ECU map. So then, once you get an ECU map downloaded, you go over to the tuning tab, you select the map you want. So for me, I have my GPX 300R, the base. So now this is the map for that. So like. We go into this. I haven't really changed much with my airflow. Um, we can get into more of that. I just haven't dove into it yet. There's a lot that's on these maps. Um, if you go into the closed loop, you can find where it's setting the AFR for closed loop. But do keep in mind that this is a narrow band tuner. It won't be able to do very well if you're putting it at like 13.5 or something like that. Uh, anything lower than 14.6 or away from 14.6 is where it's going to start getting more and more iffy in what it can do. 
but these are all your closed loop settings. Like you can change different anything you want in here. Now if we go down as far as there's open loop tables, you can look and see what these are set for. They're really, really just simple. They didn't think anything about the open loop on these. It's more just there. Um, DFCO is your fuel cutoff, I believe. Pretty sure. Uh, deceleration fuel cutoff. So you can actually change that as far as when it enables, when it disables, the coolant threshold for it. Um, under your fueling, it's where you have your AFR for your idle, because it'll actually have a different AFR depending on whether it's in the run mode or whether it's in idle mode. Uh, you can change how fast and how slowly your AFR goes up and down as far as when it's changing different modes because it's not going to instantly go from 14.6 to 13.5. It's going to go down in steps of like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or whatever and slowly change that. So if you go down to these tables, it has, you, you can change everything you want. Um, idle target is going to have your idle speeds. It changes idle speed based on engine temperature. So the hotter the engine gets, the lower it's going to put the idle speed. Um, idle air control is where I was able to fix my walkie startup that would rev up and down. I was able to lower my lower the airflow coming in during idle. And I just did that through changing my barometric compensation factor. So here's the base. If we apply my changes to it, see mine's like half as much air, way less air. Um, let's see, what other than that? Um, you have your acceleration in rich, deceleration in lean, which these are when you're in run mode, it's gonna try to rich or lean things. You have your power enrich, which from what I understand with this, power enrichment is kind of an open loop mode. If you go into the power enrich table for AFR, you'll see it's all very rich. It's from 12 to 13.5. It also does have its own uh, spark advance and things like that. You can change most anything you want with the power enrichment mode. Uh, if we scroll down, we have the spark advance tables, you have your base angles when it's in the run mode, Barometer, or inlet pressure on the left, engine speed on the top. You have your power enrichment has a different table for spark advance. So just keep in mind that there are multiple tables for the same things or for similar things and they can, they're all interacting with each other. If I change the AFR up top, there are, right here, is like a airflow coolant multiplier. So this is for airflow, but this is a multi uh, multiplier. So in this range in the middle where it has one, that's giving 100%. Here it's giving 95%, 89%. So it's giving less airflow when it gets hotter, which in essence makes the engine richer. Same way down here when it's really cold, less airflow with the same amount of fueling, keeps your engine richer. Um, let's see, other than that, power and rich, spark advance. Um, obviously there's other changes for spark advance in here. Go through all the faults for the system. Um, hardware, a lot of these I don't think you'll have to worry about, but you can double check that your Cylinder has the correct cylinder volume. Um, basically everything you want. So once you have all this, whatever you want changed in here, basically you would select what you want, click your apply patch button, then click the plus sign down here to add a scaler to this. So now I can change the patch. So you can't change the actual so I'm not changing my actual map here, that base map I downloaded, I'm just changing the patch. So here I can, like, let's make this 0 0.020. So fixed value, apply. So now, if I save this, 
this patch that I did for this idle increase rate is part of the map now. It, it's <laughs> the way he does this is kind of weird. It's it's a patch where it's a part added onto the map, but it does not change your base map up here. So your base map is still the same base. You can go right back to it super easy. It's as easy as pulling this up, clicking the minus sign. It'll say, hey, I'm going to remove all your changes. Click OK. Bada boom. It's saved again as main tune version 1.1. So now that that's saved, you can go back to your control, connect up your cable, click the upload calibration area only, make sure your base file is selected, and then make sure your patch file is selected. And then you click upload. And it'll take about 30 seconds, it uploads, you'll hear your fuel pump reset and turn back on. But once that's done, you are now running your new map that you set with any patches to this. So like if I were to upload this map, this would set my idle to 14.2 instead of 14.6. What I like to do after I re-upload is immediately afterwards, I will connect over here and then go to my dashboard to make sure I can actually see, here, let's, to make sure I can actually see and confirm all my changes. Like you can see the AFR in here, you can see if there's any faults coming through, that kind of thing. Make sure your tune is good before you hop on the bike and ride it. So yeah, that's a kind of a, yeah, probably a little bit too much of a long-winded review of HUD ECU Hacker. But I will say, if you find this tool helpful, please do consider donating to him. Um, like he seems to be a good guy. Seems to be putting in a lot of work on this tool and that kind of thing where None of these tables were defined last year. He has gone through and done a lot of work and put a lot of logic into this to actually define these tables um, and actually show like, hey, this is your VE table. Like this table is not listed as the VE table when you look at the Delphi ECU. If you're just hacking into it, you have to figure out that this is what this is. Um, so yeah, do be careful in here. You can change anything you want with this ECU. You can make it so the bike will not start. So just be aware this is not something that's supported by GPX. This is an external tool that was made by some guy, I think in Europe, that just has a bike or has some ATV with this in it. So it's nothing supported by GPX. It's not supported by some large company. It's just people that like playing with this stuff are playing with this stuff. Don't jump into this and think you're going to get the endless support. If you don't want to learn it and don't want to dive into it yourself, I probably wouldn't jump into it because it's going to be a lot of guess and check. Uh, yeah, that's HUD ECU Hacker.